Hey, welcome to the show today. This is Sandra Johnson, and I'm joined by uh, Danielle Johnson and Don Geisler, um, actually both from Indie Realty. So welcome. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you may have noticed that um, Mr. Smith is not with us today. He's traveling, and so we do miss him. He actually sets the... Um, the schedule of the show and I I got to the station before I realized that I didn't do that <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so we are sort of flying by the seat of our pants but we're gonna we're gonna have a great show today so I really wanted to start out talking a little bit about our, our my favorite question for you Don is okay. what are you seeing in the market well I think we've seen it be pretty consistent with the last couple months and so the discussion is a little bit the same that um you know we did an analysis and we were down pretty significantly in closed units from 2020 and 2021 but i can tell you that those were what i consider to be super heated super mm -hmm. over overheated overcharged years and Right now, um, for our last stats, we were trending less than 5% down um, in units compared to the same month last year, you know, which is real positive. So I feel like, you know, trying to compare us to 2020 and 2021 is a little dangerous because they, they were just so overheated. You they know? were. So I feel like we've got a little bit of a normal market from velocity standpoint going on. Not that that, for some people that's comforting, for some people it's scary. There are some people that haven't ever experienced what a quote unquote normal market, you know, feels like and what it takes to, to buy and sell and operate. But um, overall, we have lots of buyers, we have lots of sellers and they're all interested. We are showing lots of property. We're still, if the property is desirable and priced appropriately, we're still seeing multiple offers you know, we're still seeing some competition. There's lots of good stuff going on out there. So, you know, as always, I say, keep your head down, tune out the noise and, and do what we do and live your life. Yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. I, I think, think you bring in a really good point, too, of just remembering that when we're looking at what the market has done in the last couple of months, we're, we're kind of missing the big picture of just how abnormal things have been recent, you know, in recent years. And that if you have just been in the market just for a short time you're just starting to look that you know things have been a little bit weird but they're they're stabilizing right now you know things are are pretty settled down and this is what we're expecting for a little bit i would say i would agree with that is that i think stable is a pretty good word for where the market's at right now i mean granted um prices are affordability is down a little bit because prices are up and interest rates are up a little bit but there's lots of creativity and there's lots of movement you know, going on with that stuff. And I don't know if we've talked about this before, but um, I, I would have to try to remember how long it has been since we've been in an actual quote unquote normal market, mm -hmm. which is, you know, 2006, five, six, they were massively overheated, massively. It was very similar to how it was the last couple of years. And when everything crashed in 2007, the crash, right? Um, lots of steps were taken to help the economy get out of it. So we started off with tax credits, right? To incentivize people to still buy houses, right? And then it moved into even more lucrative tax credits. Um, so our normal cyclical, especially the annual cycles where we would say, August is gonna slow down a little bit, then November, December is gonna slow down a little bit. I mean, everything was blown, it was all superheated you know, all superheated all the time, right? And so then when the tax credits ended and stuff like that, then things slowed down a little bit, much like now, took a little breath, and then they ramp up again. And then we went through a down cycle, and, you know, we, there's just been so many different um, kind of artificial influences on the market that I, maybe I don't even know what quote-unquote normal <laughs> is <laughs> myself. And I'm, you know, 23 years into this thing, so... Um, it's just interesting, but um, there's maybe, not panic. Maybe you haven't been here when we've explained what normal is. <laughs> normal is a setting on the dryer. That's it. And that's <laughs> it. Nothing else. That right. is all you get. There, There is now, no normal. I think in real estate, we can talk about balanced. Yes. But even 
balanced doesn't necessarily equate to normal, you know? It doesn't. And I can tell you, you know, balanced in our definition of what balanced is, which is, you know, approximately six months of inventory. That means not a buyer's market, not a seller's market. Um, we haven't been there forever. Like we've been in four months of inventory, three months, two months, one month for mm. li for years on end, you know, literally. I, I'm, I'm in real estate. I should know the number, but I'm going to say maybe nine years. And I don't know that I've ever seen a balanced market. Mm. But you probably haven't. I, 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 I would say, so. and, and people didn't realize this, but um, when everything happened, when the news media picks up anything and they run with real estate this, real estate that, um, we in the Tucson market have been pretty firmly in a seller's market. Yeah, I, for as long as I can remember, which does certainly go back your nine years. Yeah. Um, one of the things that is impacting us a little bit right now um, would be the interest rates. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get good news. We've been expecting the interest rates to come down a little bit. And we haven't had good news on that front. And I know we had a lender in speaking in the, our office meeting this week. And he's saying we're looking at like a year of um, the feds kind of wanting to hold in the position that we're at now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what I'm seeing and hearing. That's what I mostly expect, you know, so I'm not a lender. So we'll just put that right out there. Right. I'm not quoting interest rates. I know a lot of people are quoting about seven and a half percent right now as a sort of a par rate. And the fact is that they just are what they are. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, the, the good thing is that that's still really affordable. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. ever, did you ever refinance into a seven and a half percent loan and I, think that you hit the yeah. lottery? Yeah. Like yeah. you won't believe what, you'd call your friends, you won't believe what rate I just got on right. my, on my refi. It's yeah. only at seven and a half percent. It was, it was such a great, I remember feeling so elated mm -hmm. that I was out of my ten and a half percent interest right. rate down to Seven yeah, and a half. It's important to keep everything in perspective. And so it makes investing in real estate, whether it's for a home or for investment purposes, mm -hmm. it it makes it a really safe move, you know, all the time. And the thing about the rates is, I mean, most fundamentally, if you're renting, you're, you're not getting any equity in anything. So mm -hmm. it can be said you're paying 100 percent interest if you're if you're renting. And so you, you kind of can't go wrong because if you come in and you get a 7% interest rate, you know, if they go down, then you can refinance down. And if they go up, well, congratulations, because you got it at the <laughs> seven and a half, right? <laughs> right. So, so there's kind of, if you're in the market because you want a home, then there's kind of like never a quote bad time. Sure. And we're very creative with what we do, with how we help people structure their financing with our lenders and, and a lot of sellers are offering incentives that help with the interest rate and stuff. So I would encourage everybody to not be, you know, don't be paralyzed by interest rates because it's very temporary. Yes. Well, we will be back in just a few minutes. You are listening to the I Am Real Estate Show. And our guest today is Don Geisler, the owner of Indie Realty. And uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hey, welcome back to the show. We've just been chatting a little bit about the current market and kind of left off before the break talking about interest rates and how that's kind of impacting um, our buyers right now. Another thing that's been a hot topic and does impact real estate was that threat of a government shutdown. It, yeah, it was. And, and there are several different facets of a, of a government shutdown that can affect existing transactions. And so as professionals, um, I just feel like we need to be really aware, you know, so that we can manage people's expectations. Um, because there's anything can happen from <laughs> absolutely nothing happening right. to the whole shebang getting shut down, at least temporarily. Right. So if, if the entire government just shut down, then if it's a matter of, you know, all wires go through the Fed and the question is, is the Fed operating or not? Right. So, I mean, that's like kind of a worst case. I don't even know if that could happen, but people were concerned about, you know, make sure that you tell your mm -hmm. your people that are closing next week that if wires get held, wires could be held up. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. 
you know, we, we see certain situations where some government loans, if we're using a lender that's not a direct endorsed lender, some programs, the final loan approval actually physically has to go to the agency for a stamp, you know, depending on the type of loan. And those ones we know would absolutely, potentially, absolutely, potentially, absolutely, <laughs> maybe be delayed, you know, mm -hmm. so just kind of a lot to, to mention and a lot to get your to get your mind around. And when they talk about a government shutdown, they very often say a partial shutdown. And I'm most certainly not an expert at it. Um, this particular one appeared to be scary because some of the remedies that they used to keep things flowing were uh, supposedly not available. You know, like many agencies were going to shut down for this particular one. So, again, like we don't panic. Um, our We were committed. We were on the phone all week and you know, strategizing that how do we best support our agents? How do we best support our clients um, if we have delays? And we, we, we can't just stick your head in the ground or in the sand and not have a plan and, and focus on it. And, you know, this could be coming up in the near future again. I would say we kind of just kicked the ball down the road a little bit, didn't we? They, they did just kind of kick it down the road. And the, and the hope was that that wasn't the way that it fleshed out. But, and I'm like, not a very political person, but uh, my job is to be engaged with the real estate market so that we can help our agents and help our clients. And my personal feeling with, again, without being political, is that there is a contingent of the quote unquote leadership that has an itch that they really, really want to scratch. And that is, we're going to shut down the government so that we can make our point. And so I think it would be um, not wise to think that it's an impossibility. Um, I think that it is going to happen, whether it happens for two days and they say, oh, holy cow, we should not have gone down this path. Or if they hold it up for two months, you know, trying to make mm -hmm. their point. Like, I don't know, but I know that we as professionals have to be prepared for how to guide our clients through these possibilities. So. I think it would be very naive to say this is not going to happen because the leadership is too committed to it not disrupting because it looks to me like there are folks that disruption is the goal. <laughs> That's right? the goal, huh? It is the goal. So, <laughs> Well, I was going to say election years, too, um, tend to affect real estate. They do. I have had a very wise real estate leader one time say an elect talking to agents and coaching them say an election year is a nine month year mm -hmm. now so get get your stuff done and be prepared for the for the country to be distracted you know in these final three months of the year and not really be interested in doing real estate and you know i think that there could could be some truth to that and what we've seen happen however um like politics was never sport like it is now like politics has become sport. And so it used to be the presidential election, like once every four years, we would say, hey, this is going to be a nine month year because of the election and people are going to be distracted. Well, now that politics has become sport, like every election <laughs> affects people. So the question is, are we going to are we going to grind to a halt while everybody's distracted for every election or is it going to go in the opposite direction where people are going to say, oh, we're so used to all this turmoil right now that we're not we're going to live our life and, and we just don't know but we are coming up on election year so we always you got to be with the great professionals to get you through these transactions i'm telling you i think another thing that you mentioned that's important to keep in mind is that everything that we're going through is temporary yes. so the situation that's here the questions that are coming up this is a temporary situation if there's a delay it's a temporary delay it's not forever it's not you know, it's not that you can't get your house if there is a little delay. Delays happen in real estate, you know, from time to time, and it's something we try to avoid, but sometimes it happens. They're temporary. We find Thanks. the solution. When the problem comes, we figure out how to deal with it. Same thing looking into elections and all the rest of it. Those are temporary time periods. And, you know, if, if you get so focused, so focused on something that you don't know what's going to happen in the short term, and sometimes you miss out on the really nice things in the long term too. And so keeping your eye on 
your goals and what's most important to you is going to help to kind of carry you through without getting too much of this temporary situation and worry. Exactly. Which, which is very much the definition of worry, right? Which is, you know, fixating on things that you can't control and, and becoming paralyzed by it instead of acting on the stuff that you can control. You know, I can tell you that if you have from an agent, real estate agent, business building standpoint, like if you have 20 people that are in your pipeline looking to buy or sell a house and 10 of them decide they're going to sit pat and wait and see what happens in an election, you can't change their mind. Right. And then, but you still got 10 other people, you know, there's, there's still a bunch of people that are like, I have to live my life, you know, and election is going to come like, what is it? November 4th, whatever, I don't, whatever day it is, but it'll come. And the day after it, the sun is going to come up and your life is still going to be there. So, I mean, I actually can't understand being obsessed and buried in it at all. I try to, we really try to live our own, our own life, but it is going to affect people. And mm -hmm. again, we have to have a strategy. We have to be calm. I can tell you that our job is to be calm, objective problem solver in the middle of an emotional storm. You know, it makes me think of when I was a kid, the whole Y2K thing, where uh -huh. everyone is so scared that in the morning, you know, right at 1201, everything is going to crash. Computers aren't going to work. The whole right. life is going to be done. Stores are going to go crazy. And of course, 1201, nothing happens. Everybody gets up like normal, totally normal life. There were people right. absolutely convinced that something catastrophic would happen. I mean, you just, all that worry, all that concern... It mm -hmm. did nothing. And now we kind of look back and it's kind of funny that <laughs> I, there was so much concern. Yeah. You know, last week we were looking at this shutdown and we were working it Friday right up until close of business Friday. And we were like, there's not a thing we can do until Monday. And if it shuts down on Monday, we're going to see exactly what that leads to. And if it doesn't, we're going to get these deals closed and move on. And, you know, you you can't really just be fixated and worry on stuff that you can't control. That I can actually talk about for an hour if you want me to. <laughs> well, we well, can't we do that because we do have to go into the break. Uh, we <laughs> do. We, um, we're talking with Don Geisler, the owner of Indie Realty, and we will be back after the break and talk a little bit about the brokerage. And we are back. We are visiting with Don Geisler, the owner and uh, broker of Indie Realty, and we wanted to talk a little bit about the company. Um, I know that when I found Indy, I stalked you personally <laughs> yep. because we had met um, at, when I was going through some training classes. And although you were never my broker, it just left such an impression on me um, that I always thought, wow, that would be a great broker to have. And then um, when the opportunity arose, I was like, I was all in. I, I, I appreciate it. I you down. I remember calling you up and saying, congratulations, what are you doing? <laughs> I, uh, and I so appreciate it. And you have been so instrumental in the success and the direction and the tra trajectory of the company, which we are just so just unbelievably excited about um, what we've accomplished so far. And we have some milestones coming up with closed sales. I'm not going to share that just yet. Um, we have a really big mi milestone coming up. Um, November 22nd, the company will be two years old. And, you know, you joined us. We actually, one year later, going on a year ago right now, actually got into our location, into our mm -hmm. building, got it completed. And so, yeah, we were operating virtually at first, and you jumped on board <laughs> just based on a vision and yeah. I, I just really hope that, you know, all the listeners are hearing that we are really focused on professionalism, you know, on doing it right. And we're just really excited about the industry, about how the community is responding to our logo, to our message, to our presence. Um, you know, so gratifying. I had a, a neighbor, somebody that lives in the adjacent neighborhood come in the other day and just tell us how wonderful we are and and um how happy they were that we were there and the office looks wonderful and we're such good stewards of the neighborhood and you know just all kinds of things and and to go from the entire operation being a vision in my, on a brain cell or two of mine right. to actually flesh, fleshing it out and having you know 
people walking in saying we're so happy that you're here is wonderful so Allie if you happen to be listening thanks for walking in yesterday. <laughs> so it was wonderful but yeah I, you know there's a lot of stuff that we hear and real estate is a highly highly competitive mm -hmm. and you know sort of my message is always you know to consumers and to agents I have similar messages which is that there is a lot 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 that goes into supporting a client through a real estate transaction supporting an agent through a real estate career there's a lot that goes into it and you know I, I think people that just stop at commission rates for example you know mm -hmm. and, and make their decision who they go with based on commission rates it's such a small piece of it you mm -hmm. know and we're independent we're very flexible you know we we negotiate you know all that stuff but um there's so much that goes into being full service having all of your platforms in place you know knowing how to to really serve somebody and i think the same thing um is really relevant to real estate professionals you know who uh, they might be very experienced or they might come straight out of real estate school and i was i met with somebody today who's just coming straight out of real estate school and he's going to be you know a real winner and some of my conversation with this person is we all of us real estate companies have all these different models right and i always feel really I really feel for these people because they're adults they're coming from careers that they know inside and out but this is absolutely mm -hmm. foreign right and so if you visit 10 different brokerages you're going to hear 10 different philosophies 10 different compensation plans 10 different benefits packages and then by the time they're done their brains are scrambled right and then so i always envision when then they sit around the table with their significant other and they've got these 10 different vastly different models and then they default to i'm new at this but what do i know and so a lot of people default to who's quote unquote cheapest and it's devastating because um there's a lot that goes into when you say i get world-class support from my brokerage there is a lot that goes into it and just like from a consumer standpoint who's listing a home for sale it is most certainly not all about commission splits it's that's just one piece of the pie one spoke in a very large wheel uh, of all the things that go into creating a, a just a world-class operation and supporting agents well and sitting around at our weekly meetings when someone comes up and, you know, in the meeting, they ask a question, hey, I don't understand this. I could really use some help. There's a training that's scheduled, sometimes the same day, sometimes the next week, but it's scheduled. It's there. It's available. Whoever wants to learn about this topic, you know, whether it's marketing or whether it's specific real estate, like specific to a transaction or how to handle something, that training is right there. And it's not a, oh, well, let's consider it six months down the road. It's, it's right there. It's available. The whole mission of what I see you guys doing as far as how the brokers relate to all of the agents in the office is to help the, the agents to do the best that they can and to live out the potential that they, you know, to, to be where they want to be at. And I mean, that is something that a lot of people say, but they don't necessarily follow. And I think all of that is client focused and client driven as well mm -hmm. because a lot of times the first answer to a question is what is it that your client wants mm -hmm. and yeah. I think that's so important that it's not negotiating um, for a win it's negotiating for a win for your client right what does that win mean to your client and I I appreciate that yeah well you, I'm I'm glad that what we strive to do shines through and that, that you everybody sees it because we are relentlessly focused on the success of our agents. It's not success that we assign to them. Like, Danielle, I want you to do 52 deals this year, which would be cool, by the way. It would be. <laughs> but, Next year. She's you know, available. Call <laughs> but Danielle. We sit yeah, down and you, do, you lay out what your goals are and we are relentlessly focused on helping you reach them and we think that the training is just critically critically important but um we're very focused on creating a culture that people just want to be part of you know we're looking for people that want to be part of something new and exciting but and get though know that you are getting that training 
that you're that you're looking for and the support that you need. Um, we just think it's really critical. And you know, we happen to feel like we've put together the best of all worlds. Um, we have a full service, you know, model to the agents. Um, but we have wonderful compensation plans for our agents, and we just want them to have a great quality of life. If somebody was um, interested in speaking with you, can you give us the phone number that they can call? Yeah, so I'm Don Geisler. I'm the designated broker and CEO, and my number is 520-869-2376. And we're always available to, to chat, and uh, we love to have people come over and visit the location. Awesome. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. We're kind of wrapping up with our final segment here with Don Geisler, the owner and broker of Indie Realty. So I um, wanted to talk a little bit more about the company. Um, and if someone were interested in um, joining Indie, what's usually the first step that they take? Um, the process... You know, typically what I like to do is I'll, I'll chat with somebody on the phone a little bit and see if they have specific questions they want an answered on the spot. But um, really love to have people come into the office and meet up and get a tour of the office and because you really get a feel for what our culture is like in there. And we have uh, set out, like I already said, to build a culture that people just want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And that people are happy to be a part of and, and, you know, fulfills everybody and helps them earn the living that they want to that they want to live. So, yeah, um, to that end, our office, um, there's a standing invitation to the entire public, you know, in the Tucson area to come into our office. It, so we are located at 7255 East Tanca Verde Road. We are right across from Udall Park and we love to just show people around and we love to create relationships, you know, whether it is with potential buyers and sellers or just consumers that have no interest in the market, but recognize us as part of the community. Like we talked about before, um, whether it is, uh, agents that are interested in, you know, potentially joining the team. Um, we have a standing invitation for the entire public. Like we are very proud of being part Tucson born and bred as a company. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very special to us. It's very important to us. Um, indie, by the way, is short for independent. I always like to get that out there in case anybody wonders. You know, indie is a word that's very near and dear to my heart, and it means independence. And so we take a lot of pride in being an independent real estate broker. Um, but we I do... I, I'd like to just touch on that a little bit because the decisions that you make for the company are not to answer to shareholders. They're not. Or other parties. They are what is in the best interest of the company, which is frequently what's in the best interest of the agents yes. and always what's in the best interest of our clients because those things have to align. And I love that the decisions aren't being made by someone who's looking how to increase the profits. Yeah, They're, they're actually, that's what I love about the local part of that and about, um, who you are as a person, but just the, uh, that culture that you talked about because everyone is there to lift everyone else mm -hmm. up and it's such a welcoming and supportive environment. And you're inviting um, the general public to come in and take a, a walk through the office, but you also have kind of an open door policy for people that want to come in and talk about um, their companies or come in and just drop in and work. Don't sit under, under a tree in a parking lot. If yeah. you've got like, you know, 15 minutes you need to kill. You've always right. had that door open to the, the vendors, especially the people that we tend to use in our, in our businesses, the home inspectors and title people and the lenders that they have a place that they can come as well. Yeah. We, um, the office is beautiful. It is air conditioned. It is heated. We got all the bells and whistles. But it, I do want to hit on what you were talking about. Yeah, people can come in at any time. We have space. And so w regardless of what your job is out there, if you're on the road all day and you're grabbing sandwiches at gas stations for lunch and sitting in the parking lot barbecuing to death, you know, we're like, come, come in and see us. We have space. We literally do want to get to know you. Um, we literally do want 
uh, Tucson and the surrounding communities to say, this company is part of the community and they are here for us and we're there here for them. That's kind of where we want to head. We um, right now through the month of October are sponsoring a food drive. So we do want to get the word out. This uh, supports the community food bank and we are collecting non-perishable items right now at the office. So um, if you're of a mind to, please feel free to come in. Um, they they kind of folk, we have um, publicized what their most needed items are, but you know, the dry goods like cereal, peanut butter, uh, stuff like that, soups, mm -hmm. um, ravioli, you know, all that Chef Boyardee stuff and all that, that, they're really itching for stuff like that. And so there's a real need in our community uh, we have our collection box right in the lobby. So by all means, grab grab the kiddos, come in, check out the office. We've got a playroom there. Um, believe it, yeah, you heard me right. We actually have a playroom <laughs> in our real estate office uh, for the kiddos. Um, but please come by and, and make your donation to the Community Food Bank, and we'll get it where it's going, and we can get to know you a little bit uh, as a bargain. As a you bonus. know, I think it's a really cool opportunity, too, with the food bank that we're collecting for the month, you know, when – when the different grocery stores put out their sales, my kids and I will sometimes take a look at what's on sale and what could be given to a food bank. And if it's something that we don't eat, it's on sale, it's a great price. It, why not take that opportunity to bless someone else? And, you know, it's it's just really cool to have them thinking about it too and to be aware of looking for things that other people do need. And then to be able to go in and to drop it off. I brought in a big bag of stuff with my kids and I told them what it was and what it was for. And I let them pick, pick up each item and put That's it inside awesome. the box. And just being part of it helps them to understand. And I think that is so important for us to teach our kids. And so I'm going to second that, that idea of, you know, grab your kids, make them be part of it. Have them help you to get some of the food that you're going to donate and then let them put it in the box so they can feel that they're part of it and that they are making a difference regardless of their age. Yeah. And they will love the playroom. They do love the playroom. <laughs> they love the office. But, you know, we do have video of, of you. It's on our social media. Um, the video of your kiddos dropping the stuff in the box. And it's one of the most adorable things you've ever seen because they're they're so, like, somber is not the right word, but they're just, like, exuding that they grasp the importance of doing your part and mm -hmm. they they were and uh, th granted they knew that you were recording them so they're putting on a little bit of a show <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <clears throat> they're on their best behavior and, and doing the thing and but at the same time um it is we have that video and it's it's just so gratifying but it is very very easy it doesn't have to be overwhelming to do your part mm -hmm. and like danielle just said grabbing what whatever's on sale that that is um relative to the food bank you know the type of stuff they use grab it bring it over and uh, we'll take care of it so yeah it was it was a great video of the kids they i had just a lot had of fun. A, i just cute. had a flashback to being in school and having the food drive and we were all competing and like we bought the cheapest stuff because you got credit for the item that you brought in and it was prune juice well <laughs> being school of school age you know we're like Oh, we're just going to get this stuff. Not realizing they were so excited to get the prune juice. Were they? We, we only did it because they were the little can and we got the biggest bang for our buck. And we we were out for the win. Just saying we were That's, out for the win. I, I find that so funny. I had a, a teacher in high school and I'd never given any thought to this, right? We, we do all these canned food drives and, and donations and stuff like that throughout the course of our lives. And I had a teacher one time that is like, look, Everybody appreciates everything, but we know you go into the back of your pantry and you get the lima beans that are six years old and you bring them and you, you donate them. And she's like, have you ever seen a hungry little kid that wanted lima beans? <laughs> and I was like, it just really stuck with me. So I tend to, I tend to like go and get all that like Chef Boyardee stuff, like when it's on sale and just stock up on it and, you know, give it, give it to him. But they do need the staple stuff too. The kiddos do need to be eating their lima beans once in a while. I'm not a huge veggie guy, but the kiddos should be eating their lima beans. So all of it, but the cereal, the peanut butter, mm -hmm. you know, the soups, all that stuff. It's just so critically important. Yeah. And I'm, we just believe that as, as agents, as business owners in this community, that the health of our community 
is what really is most important. And we want to see Tucson thrive and we want to see people being successful and we don't want food insecurity to be what we're all talking about. We'd much rather be talking about our wild cats or mm. <laughs> something fun going on in Tucson. So that's awesome. We love that the that the company has done this and made a way for everyone to stop in and, and support that effort. You can't get any more fundamental than feeding people. You no. can't. Food, shelter, you know, those things are so critically important. So you, you get people fed, you're doing the right thing, you know, no matter what. And, you know, I just encourage people to not qualify it politically, to, to mm -hmm. suspend any judgments at a, at a given moment and just say, we need to feed each other. We need to make sure people are healthy. They're, they're, they're cared for. And so come by, 7255 East Tankaverde Road. And the and phone number again? 520-869-2376. I was just going to say, you know, this mm -hmm. year has been really hard on a lot of families too. And so if you're doing well this year, it's a really, really important thing to be able to show your kids that this is part of what you do, you know, taking care of the community. And, you know, if you're just barely making it, it's still a really good idea to just show your kids that you're trying to give back to the community and you're trying to help other people. Agreed. There's never a bad time to be generous with your words, with your resources, um, with your attention. So with that, um, we would love to thank the people that help us put this show on every week. Um, Rego Pest Prevention, Power Solar, Indie Realty, um, t Pioneer Title Company, and I'm missing one. Who am I missing? I Got me. Out. Got me. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. And if you do use, it was Caring Transitions. If you do use them, would you please let them know that you heard about them on the radio? And uh, we absolutely love the companies that we work with, and um, we're very confident in recommending them so uh, definitely reach out and if you want to reach us you can reach me at 520-850-1725 you can reach me at 520-373-6864 come stop by have a cup of coffee and bring some food